or I leave it to Montel Williams to let a devastating disease make a complete pest out of himself. And don't some big drug companies know it? He's here. All right, well, attention all you big drug companies. Montel Williams wants to have a word with you. Be afraid. The entertainer is doing his best to get them to spur research on and drugs for multiple sclerosis, the deteriorating neurological condition that afflicts at least 400,000 people in this country, including Montel, and in the interest of full disclosure here. Moi. It is among the many professional and personal struggles highlighted in the Emmy award-winning talk show host and actor's just-released bestseller, Climbing Higher. This is a great book. It took me just a couple hours to read it. That's how good it was. Yeah. Montel, good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, my friend. How you doing? Good. I'm doing good. You know, let me just say something about the number that you had just reported, and it said that I'm, I'm waging a battle. That could be conservative. That could... That's right. I'm waging a battle against the mass, but one of the things that I've really ticks me off the most about this is that, you know, this country for the last 20 years, every report about MS has come out and said almost the identical thing, either under 400,000, 300,000, 250,000, and they've been saying this for over 20 years, and we know for a fact my foundation helped to talk or work with two other companies, Zogby and Gallup, who have now commissioned two polls. Both of them come back, and we think the number is more in, in terms of around 1.8 million people. That's important to you because you want to take the, the, the disease off orphan kind of industry stuff. To Correct. something larger that would get more support. And, and right? Look, I'm trying to make sure that that the industry out there understands that there's some money to be made. Yeah. You know, this is a capitalistic society, and but these guys must hate you. They, well, they, you know, they, they I think they love me right now because it's 1.8 million people that have an illness that they may be able to cater to and sell drugs to. Right now, it's cost me 1,100 bucks a month. Does in this drug the new Medicare drug thing help or hurt your cause? That was an incredible move, I think, on the president's part. I don't even think some people really recognize what this bill did. You know, there's a lifetime cap. Of, I think it's 3800 $3, bucks that you have to spend. And for a person like you and I who have to spend close to seventeen to eighteen thousand dollars a year on medication, right. you spend thirty eight hundred bucks, that's it if you're you can't afford the medication. So Thank I think you. I applaud the president for the medication. And we should stress, and as you stressed in your career, this isn't all just about multiple sclerosis for no. you. This is about all types of diseases that have, you know, debilitating effects on people. You're talking about the government having a greater commitment to addressing this. Absolutely. And that's the reason why we've worked with Senator Santorum and Senator Specter to see if we can get a senatorial hearing within the next 60 days to address neurological disease, specifically MS. And that's the reason why I wrote this book. I mean, again, climbing higher, I picked it up from Neil. Right. But, you know, this book was written because I've had people walk up to me, Neil, I, unfortunately, like yourself and me, we are can be unwilling poster people for this, this disease. And, and initially, I didn't want to do this. And when I came forward, because I knew that the tabloids were going to release information about me, I came forward because I wanted to own the definition of who I am with this illness. Well, a so few I, people apparently paid attention after I that I think they out. did. Yeah. Let me ask you something, mm -hmm. though. In this book, you show warts and all, sure. which, by the way, I would never do in an autobiography. Mm -hmm. I would just show the great things about me. Yeah. But that's me. Mm -hmm. But you, you talk about how you contemplated suicide and actually tried to act it out. I, I, I went deep into that because I wanted to make sure that there are a lot of people out here who suffer in silence, like I was at this point in time. I had a lot of people around me who loved me, but I was so afraid uh, that I'd reach out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't accept that help. And so in some of my darkest times, and I'm telling you, one of the things we're, we're not told when we're diagnosed is that, you know, one of the major symptoms of this disease is depression. And in one of my darkest times, I slipped into an abyss that I didn't want to come out of. And because the pain that I was suffering from from this disease, I had suffered from neuralgia, which is so insidious about this illness because you and I have the same illness, Very but we painful. have enti entirely different symptoms. I have neuralgia really, really bad. And it was one of those moments where I just couldn't take it anymore. And I sat in a closet for about three hours just thinking about, and I had my gun in my hand. I was yeah, were you doing like a Russian roulette thing oh, yeah. with the well, gun? No, I was just flipping it around, thinking yeah. I, I set it up so that I, I, it looked as if I was cleaning my guns. And so if it went off, somebody would think I was cleaning my guns and I made a mistake. And then I realized how stupid that was, but, you know. But then I, you try to do it a little while later, running into a car, right? But that was at a time when, I'll tell you, the pain was so great, and I had to function as if it wasn't there, I yeah. couldn't take it. But the pain issue, Montel, you raised. I mean, uh, you were taking OxyContin. That's the same thing Rush Limbaugh allegedly was. OxyContin, now, do, So Vicodin, when you look at his case, Cowan. do you feel sympathetic? Or? I feel sympathetic for him, especially, you know, one of the things that I think this book is about is you said, I've shown you my warts. Well, it's about truth. And I think one of the things that Rush and a lot of other people, all of us out here who are suffering from illnesses need to do is start telling our friends the truth. It is painful. Sometimes, you know, I don't want to get up in the morning, but I have not missed one day of work. I've not missed one appointment because of my illness because I stay on top of my medication. Right? My show's been renewed for another two years. And I'm, I'm dedicated dedicating myself to, to keeping myself as well as I can, but sometimes it's hard. Did, 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 this, did this disease mm -hmm. end your marriage? No. 
No, my, okay. my marriage was already uh, ending, and you know, I'm kind of constrained in discussing about it. I think. Well, you discuss you know, it in here. I discussed it in here, just at the point of the talking about. I think my fears. You know, I closed in. I was so afraid of, of being rejected by everybody that I ended up forcing a lot of people to reject me. And that's the reason why I wrote this book. Because but you I take people, the blame for it. Well, you know, yeah. You know, I take the blame for a lot of miles, and that's the reason why I work so hard to see if I can try to correct some of those things. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm pretty hard on myself, and I judge myself pretty hardly, and I'm thinking that maybe by filleting myself this way for other people who are ill or people who are taken care of or love people who are ill people, they can understand that maybe we need to get below the surface. When I ask, when, when your wife asks you, Neil, you're doing okay today, and you give her that pat answer, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Well, she knows that maybe 20 minutes later, she knows it. She knows you. She knows that, yeah. dang, Neil's having a tough day. So I'm going to go and help him out a little bit without him even having to know that I'm doing that. So and do you need that? Do you need a, Oh, we all need would that. Would you consider getting married again? Oh, man, it's going to be a tough one for me. You know, tough one. Um, so I, I wouldn't count it out, but, but you know, it's going to be hard for me to... I'm still trying to work me. Yeah. And as soon as I really have corrected me and a lot of the things that I've done wrong, I lost a very, very important relationship just because of my own fear. Yeah. And until I can correct that, I, I don't think I'm really that good of a, a meriting kind of Could I guy. ask you a crazy aside, Montel, in the book? I discovered lots of things about you in the book, but one is that you're more a Republican or independent than a Democrat. Yeah. See, I had, you, yeah. I had you a big liberal. I've been a Republican my entire life. I just recently uh, re-registered as an independent for the last election. You like the president? I, I, I have a lot of respect for this guy, and I know a lot of people are thinking crazy, but I can care less. I think he has surrounded himself with the people he needs to do the job. And right now, what we need to do is allow him to do the job. There are some things wrong. Like I've listened to reports. The economy's taking a while to come back. Yeah. That's not necessarily his fault. But you argue that if you could sit in the Oval Office with him and oh. chat with him, you'd give him an earful. Well, he and I need to have a conversation. Because and what one of the things we have to have a conversation about to begin with is, number one, I think we ought to change the way some foundations do business in this country. If you're raising money and it's claiming that you're going to find a cure for an illness, then at least 70 or 80 percent of the money you raise better go towards that research for that. And that's not happening in America. And I'll say clearly, when I first got diagnosed, I said I was going to start a foundation, the Monta Williams MS Foundation. Every penny that's been sent to me by any person that, that's watched your screen has gone directly out of my pocket right back into the hands of researchers. We've given out over $500,000 worth of grants in research. All the administrative costs for my foundation is paid for by me or other corrupt companies that donate that money aside. Why can't other companies do that? If you raise the money, start putting the money in research and we can start curing this. Real quick personal yes. question. With all your money and success, mm -hmm. now this disease, why didn't you just want to go to a nice tropical place, a cooler tropical place, and just deal with it? I get stopped by people all the time who say, Montel, my mother, my brother, my sister, my aunt, my uncle, my cousin has MS, and, or my mother, my father, my sister, brother has cancer, and how do you deal with it? How do you stay so positive? And as long as I can still help people, this way, man, that's what I've been doing my whole life. Why should I stop now? You go. You go. All right, Montel Williams, the book is Climbing Higher, Racing Up the Bestseller List, and at the risk of sounding partial.